Hello everyone, welcome to Capsule Cast Week 7. I am your host, Xman, and I am joined once again by my lovely co host, Destiny. Hello. And we've got a very special guest, coach of Kaiju, a Napper enthusiast. Oh, I'm back here again. Thanks for having me. <laughs> back again. <laughs> um, how is everyone? Uh, thinking, <laughs> thinking, uh -oh. Ho thinking, hoping, praying, all of the ings. What about you, now? Yep, bursting with absolute confidence that I don't know what's going to happen this week. Yay! And probably, and probably of joy because of what happened this of uh, this past week. Oh, I have. I'll, I'll get into that later. <laughs> oh no! Yeah, we'll get we'll get into that. Right, okay, well, with that said, shall we get moving on to the first match of this week? I'd rather not, but... <laughs> okay, other than Destiny's objections, I think everyone else is uh, is happy to get moving on. Um, so, match one of this week, we have Cinema versus Budokai. Now, um, I, I'll, I'll do a quick rundown before I hand it off to you, Destiny. So... We had Janemba vs early Piccolo starting. Um, there was one tag in the entire match, and it was Budokai uh, who tagged. And um, early Piccolo and N Goku, I got down as top performers for Budokai. Whereas Gogeta did a lot of heavy lifting for you guys. Um, tried to sort of bring you back into it. As he has been doing a lot lately, yes. And yeah, that, that's my quick synopsis. Destiny, your thoughts? Um. Alright, before I get into my salty tangent, as I normally do, I'm um, actually like. No, like seriously, GG Budokai. You made a good, good character. You made characters really good. You made even better characters, just still good. I uh, was not expecting the early Piccolo build change. We were expecting him to still be on Demonic Bargain. But, um... Alright, a little, bit of, a little bit of saltiness. Um, I think Turles got robbed. Oh. He tried flying away from a B2. That normally, even when you quick fire a B, uh, beam B2, and they try to dodge, you know, they'll dodge, right? Yeah. And, um... Yeah, he got clipped. Just a little bit. <laughs> oh dear. And, um, uh, yeah, robbed me from my all-star. Yeah. That's but, uh, other than that, no, like, like, actually, it was, funny enough, a close match. Like, two-bar difference because of Gogeta and his performance. But, yeah. It was, uh, GG's Budokai, you definitely deserve, you know, any wins you can for, you know, getting people like early Piccolo working on a consistent basis. Um, I, I will say, I think that considering what I remember of this match, how bad Janemba did, um, up against, He did two bars. Yeah, up against early Piccolo. Like, I think that you guys brought it within a respectable level, like two bars, considering how bad Jane actually did at the start, is pretty, mm -hmm. pretty and respectable. When, and when Gogeta came in, he literally had to do two characters worth, by the way. Yeah. And he almost did. Yeah, he did. Gogeta, Gogeta death. Fortunately, there's just too much of a mountain to climb. Um, Nappa, do you have any thoughts? Yeah, uh, I think overall could have gone either way, really. Because Gogeta ended off so strong for Cinema that time. It's, you can't understate. They almost did all of Supreme Kai before the tag without taking much damage at all. Mm -hmm. I'll say it's, Cinema didn't lose because Gogeta wasn't there trying his absolute hardest. But, but yeah, by, by the way, like right before he took out Sup Well, I would say right before, but literally supreme kai had like 5k health left and the only reason Gochita took any f form of damage from him is because 
he clashed Supreme Kai Power Rage. He won that and then did a uh, crazy combination as Kabito Kai. And he had some indignation stacks, I think, so he did actually some damage. But yeah, that was the only form of damage Supreme Kai ever did to Gogeta. It actually was mostly it actually was mostly um early goku that was kind of just doing a lot of damage supreme kai has been one of the best like well not the best performers but he's looked quite good in pre-season and in the main season as well so that's no slouch so, to be knocking over goji because uh what is it currently supreme kai is uh actually the third best on their team mm-hmm. considering when you have people like at least when you think about it, and Goku, early Goku, and their FA adult Gohan yep. on the field. And um, uh, just to let you both know, um, have fun with adult Gohan. This was the final week he was in. Yeah, he is fun. in the rest of the season, though. I know I've got to face him, but I think I think we can uh, arrange for that man's downfall. Gee. Uh, I think Budokai is the only team right now that have three, that have any character at three benches, yeah. They have both early Piccolo and Adult Gohan at three benches. Yeah, they're trying so. to get rid of their, their top characters benches straight from the off. And it's weird to say that about uh, early Piccolo of all characters. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, uh, funny enough, because Adult, at least Adult Gohan, when you think about it, is normally quite a strong character, right? Uh, he is currently their uh, second worst. I feel like that's just too how little he's been in. When he starts getting in, I yeah. feel like it's and, really different. And I'm, and Goku is actually their worst right now, and it's only a seven k difference between him and Adult Gohan. I'd say t- statistically and generally, I would say they're the two best. But it's weird how mm-hmm. that works mm-hmm. out. Um. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, well, actually. Well. I, I would say something we should mention first is, uh, this is the this was the final week for characters to qualify for the All Stars, and would you want to explain exactly what that means? Okay, so uh, what the All Star event or the actual like just just how people qualify? Right. Okay. So qualify. for the qualification, you need to hit over a fifty k average for the over first. I think they have to be in for at least. Do they have to be in a certain amount? They, they, they have. They, I'm pretty sure they have to be in for most of the weeks. Like early Piccolo still in. Early Piccolo qualifies and he was out for three weeks. So I, I think like at least over at least, half the week. Yeah, I feel like they have to be in at least three or four weeks. But they have to have an average of fifty thousand over the rest first Elbows. seven weeks of the season. Um, mm-hmm. So there are. Because it was posted today, there are 23 it, characters that have qualified. It end, yeah, it ends, uh, actually, uh, 24. Is it 24? Mm-hmm, because PyCon is, PyCon's the last one above 50k. Oh. Oh, sure. but Gotenks doesn't count. Uh, Gotenks, Gotenks doesn't count, is that's on what the I list. thought. Oh, yeah, tw- yeah. oh, yeah, tw- well, maybe, I think they're still talking about it. Um... Uh, yeah. but yeah, that's how you twenty, 20 yeah, 20, 23, uh, unless, I, I will, I had the stats thing pulled up so I can list characters off for each team that has one, because, um, every team, funny enough, has one except for Cinema. And even then, what I will caveat the same with that is, Cinema had a character, was, Mr. Goji, was very close, was 500 was very damage close. away. So what I will say, because I don't remember it ever being like this in previous seasons, um, Mm -hmm. it shows the strength of the league because there's that many characters that have qualified. Like, I can't remember a time where every team has. And obviously, it hasn't happened this season, but it almost has happened. I I just want to say, this is, I think, the first... I just want to say, I think this is the first one where Ultimate Gohan does even... Actually, oh, not the first one where Ultimate Gohan doesn't qualify because I don't think he was in the last one either. Um, actually, no, he might. Uh, yeah, Ultimate Gohan's not even in it. 
That's crazy. Just think we've got. Look, think about it. We've got early Piccolo, Krillin. <laughs> Those well, two uh, alone. Well well, 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 we'll get to that. But for Budokai, they actually have two qualified. Uh. They both early Goku and early Piccolo. Oh my God! The early show. It's happening. And you want to know? And you want to know something? They were only four. They were basically only four thousand difference in damage. That's mad. But uh, yeah, that's all I need to say. Uh, Napper, have you said everything that you wanted to on this match? Or uh, I think the one thing I didn't say, but early Piccolo, how did he get this good? You drop Kid Goku for this guy? I, I was skeptical at first, but I can't. I can't argue with the results. Shout out to my man. <laughs> oh my honestly, you can't, honestly, you kind of got to steal on that one too. You guys drop what Raditz or no the Turles for Kid <laughs> Goku, know. but I mean that was kind of a steal because you probably weren't even going to get him the following season. Uh, I I think it's a winner for all parties. Eventually, I, uh, I think Namek might actually I think Namek might regret dropping early because uh, yeah they're never getting him back. Yeah maybe, but Tambourine can be a good character. They've got him there, so I don't know. Um, no, I mean, I, I mean, yeah, but I, no, I, almost no one's been as consistent as this early Piccolo right now. That's true. Um, so, but anyway, yeah, let's get moving on to match number two, which is Dirt versus Sentai. Now, I feel bad about this match because I really wanted Dirt to get the win, and I think a lot of people did just because how badly they're struggling but I'm happy for Sentai because obviously they were struggling as well um, but they've got their uh, their, their extra W so they're now, on, um, now 3 and 4 um, you, what you can I say something real yeah? quick? Yeah? Um, I, I was actually wrong with my thing earlier there was one other team that did not make anyone in the qualifiers is that Derp? it's Derp okay but, but still though, that 14 out of 16 teams have people in, mm. in the running, it's, it's pretty good. Um, anyway, so to start the match we had Ginyu versus Berta, and I have to say it's kind of rough seeing Ginyu always going against like the top people. Like you go against Berta this week, uh, didn't he go against Ultimate Gohan? The other he week. went against Ultimate Gohan against Hybrid, yes. Yeah, and then I swear he went against someone else. Like we, no, he went against um, he went against Base Zarvan and did well, to be fair. And he went against other people, but like he's gone against top top players. And he, he's either been against the top or he's been more towards bottom. Yeah, so it, it's kind of rough, really. Um. In this match, we had five tags, which, to be honest, I think that's the highest of the week because we didn't have many tags this week at all. Um, yeah, so we had five tags: three from Dirt, two from Sentai. Uh, as you know, we we're saying about how good Berta did against Ginyu. I would probably say he was the MVP of the match. Uh, not, you know, Raccoon not that far behind him uh, for Sentai, but. Yeah, it's kind of rough for Dirt. Dodoria tried. He did 70,000, but everything else just didn't really seem to be going for them. Particularly that start matchup with Ginyu against Berta. Um, do you have any thoughts mm -hmm. on this match, Destiny? Honestly, I think this was... Honestly, funny enough, I think this was like the... At least if you're looking at stats, it's like... You kind of got to feel bad for Derp here because both Birder and Raccoon did 60 to 70k while, you know, two of Sentai's better characters that you'd normally think of, say a man who's a top 10 character last season, and Jiren, who's been, you know, really looking up lately, uh, didn't even do 40. Hell, Jiren didn't even do 30, but... Uh, that I think that also I think that goes to show the power of how Sentai has uh, been building their characters, and honestly, it feels really sad for Derp because Derp's trying, 
but it's like it seems Ginyu is being thrown into the worst situations. Probably not even partly his fault, because like he Ginyu has been a incredible starter. Like even this time, while yeah he didn't do the best, he still did 40k plus. And, I mean, like, Bobbity, while, albeit not a character you would think of, you know, being good enough, he is consistently doing near his 40, and Doria and Salzo have been trying. It's generally been their highest damage character in theory because of how they built him, Hercule, and their most annoying character one in theory because of his kit, has, a. Uh, been constantly doing either like 10 to 20k or just really been flopping yeah it's not been great and on that front. it's and it's not even like he's going against really good characters either he's just not been doing well no he's been kind of rough lately the, the problem is they can't i can't think of a way they bring 19 in for him, over. Um, not because yeah, nineteen yeah, is bad. It's just the build. Like I don't know how they move things around. I'm sure they've thought of it. But, um, I mean, he he is an android. I'm pretty sure they have android guitars free. They this do. Wouldn't be the I, first I'm more thinking about an android character on their team. I don't know what blues they have free. Maybe attack uh, one. Was that souls? I don't know what Souls is on. I don't know why he runs. I'm pretty sure Salsa is normally on defense EL. I know they definitely do not have. They don't have EL free, and I'm pretty sure both healings are taken. Yeah. Mate, they could probably accommodate it, but. Uh, Nap, do you have any thoughts? Yeah, honestly, Derp. <laughs> Just. The, the weeks when Derp has Hercule in, and Hercule doesn't perform, it just. They got a mountain to climb after. Hercule had a uh, terrible, terrible week, which is... How much did he do? He hit 1v2. He did uh, almost 15k, and that was it. Oh, yeah. It's not good at all. That's like, lich that's basically one ultimate worth of damage. Yep. For specifically and, his uh, um, also Dodoria also just... Dodoria's been doing great for a couple years now, and it doesn't. Dodoria doesn't feel like the kind of character who would, you know, be the top of the team. Yet there's still all of these great performances, uh, like can... Bobby hitting a B2, Pui Pui yeah. nice shot, and Dodoria tagging in and comboing in. His ultimate was just pretty great overall. Um, I can tell you right now that that is correct. Dodoria is currently the top of Derp right now. Uh, by a little bit, because literally the one, the person right under him in the rankings is Salsa. So it's the Doria and Salsa that are carrying the team, and the worst character on their team right now is Herc at twenty three thousand. Not, yeah. not, not trying to out derp or anything, but it it's important to you know make sure our information is correct when we're talking about stuff. Yeah, but overall, Sentai just... They changed Birder from attack to key on the on his EL build, and that just been looking wonderful overall. So uh, um, props to uh, Sentai for that hard call-out, even though Birder's been so great with attack. They have the guts to uh, uh, change it. I'll, I'll so. speak. Well, carry on. Oh, I was just, just going to say, speaking of Sentai... Um, they currently only have one character that can qualify for that has qualified for uh, All Stars. Jiren. Uh, yep. Even with his even with his bad weeks, he still qualifies, and he is still within the top eleven characters. If you don't count Gotenks. Mm. I'm not surprised. He's quite powerful. Uh, what I will say, uh, another note for Sentai, um, is Raku. Uh, he's second weekend, and he's already doing a lot better than mm -hmm. 21 was, so I feel like I mean, that's a, a big upgrade for them going into the I mean, second half of the season. It might skew a little bit because he hasn't been in that much, but yeah, he is, uh, he's within the top 30 characters. 
actually he was if he was if he has been in if he was in more than just uh these past two weeks basically um you might have qualified for all-stars to be honest yeah uh because he's at he's at 48k right now but you know he obviously wasn't in for that long so that's true um yeah i i feel like it's uh it's unfortunate they couldn't get 21 to work but it's good that for them that they've got raccoon there um mm -hmm. So, so considering I, I don't know if that loan's ever. I don't know if that loan's gonna happen again for at least a bit. Oh, the King Cold Jace. Yeah, yeah. From possibly not. We'll get into that later, I mean, but possibly not. It doesn't even have to just be for Jace. It's just like I don't think the I don't think Raccoon's going to leave Muscle for a bit after this season. Probably not. No. Um, anyway. On me just, uh, oh. just wanted to say, um, Derp, I heavily believe in you. Maybe, m maybe it might be time to, or at least soon, for her to be at least sitting on the bench for a bit. You know, because to be honest, like two key suck characters could, you know, really help. It could be really annoying to deal with. Because <laughs> you, 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 you've seen how. You've seen how Bobby's been doing, and 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 it's not like Android 19 is a fodder character. Like he, even on Androids when they couldn't really spare the Patars for him, he did do good for some weeks. It was just you know, it's kind of hard on Androids when characters like Seventy Bell exist. Well, um, attack. If I think that from what I remember, Dirt Coach saying attack two's worked on nine. So they could probably put mm -hmm. attack one on him if it's free. So they could probably work around it. I'm sure there's a way. Or, or they could put attack two on him and attack one on Ginyu. That that too, yeah. They could move things. Which uh, might help Ginyu a little bit actually too, because he might because he won't have the negative defense. And he might get self harm sacks off one. So there you go. See, we're, we're framing ideas. We do we do that in cast as well. Don't worry. Um, mm -hmm. Sweet. Are uh, we ready to get moving on to the next match? Yeah. Let's go. Alright, so match number three, we have Namek versus Rugrats. Now, um, this match, obviously... This was, was, this a, was basically a stomp. It was. It was a big stomp. And uh, I'm, I'm going to be surprised. I'm going to be honest. I'm because gonna... uh, we almost had an elite... We almost had, They almost had an elite member this week. Yeah. And it was uh, not someone you think. No, considering definitely how not. Considering how he's been doing this season and the last, what, three seasons, Actually, really. Um, GT Goku. Yeah. Uh, it was uh, 4k off an elite, by the way. 4,000 off an elite. GT Goku. Uh, and to top it all off, he, he started the match against PyCon. Pycon of all people who um, you know, in this season in pre-season has looked a beast um, from what I remember about this match, GT, Goku and Pycon both tagged um, I, I know GT, Goku definitely did early um, and that's why he, when he came back in I think, I'm not sure who it was against, it might have been King Piccolo he came back in and that just did a load of damage. Um, in fact, it was just it was just uh, GT Goku tagged because there was only one tag in the match, and that was from him. Uh, uh, actually, there were there were, two, there were two tags. There were two tags. The stat spreadsheet lies to me. Swear I'm literally looking at the spreadsheet right now. Who tagged? Trunks. Trunks tagged. Okay, but they're, all yeah, the tags were on Rugrats. No, yeah, all the tags were on Rugrats. So That's what two. I've definitely... I must have just... Like, when I put the thing in, I must have put one instead of two. But it was right. They're all from Rugrats. I knew that much. Um, it was GT Goku, which honestly, you, caught, you probably could have just done, like, 4K tag, come back in, you know, guys elite, but... Um, I, I it think was, he did more than that. He did uh, about 20,000, I think, and then, they put, and then he tagged... 
but then Trunks. Uh, was... Funny enough, um, Trunks wasn't even the star of the show here, other than GT Goku. It was, it was two of their characters that have been not doing great. Did really well this week. Oh yeah. GT Goku did ninety six thousand. Cell Junior did almost sixty. Th uh, that's what I remember out this match. Kid Trunks did nothing because Pycon like steamrolled through him, and I remember because we was in VC. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. any, any any of the uh, viewers don't join the VC. It's pretty fun during the watch party. But anyway, we was in the watch party, and Toshiro, coach of Rugrats, was. Uh, Kind of thinking that they'd lost at the point that Kid Trunks kind of got wiped out, but then Soul Jr. and uh, GT Goku just playing the ultimate, just crush him on just Namek, on Light Piccolo as well. There, like Light Piccolo was in the strongest member of Namek, arguably. In fact, it's not even arguably at this point. And they just destroyed. Um, so. Well played, Rugrats, on that. Uh, Nathma, do you have any thoughts? Oh, honestly, yeah, when I was watching the match and PyCon started so strong, before before GT Goku tagged, I thought it was PyCon was in, in for a big week. Mm. Which, to be fair, he was overall. He still did 76,000. 76k, yeah. It was really impressive because PyCon's, you know, they paid good money for him, so good to hit results, but. Too bad for Namek that not everyone else in the lineup could uh, pull their weight. But... Yeah, Ragra GT Goku. I am I am a very well known default AI hater, but I can't hate results. That's I'll, I'll leave it there. Mm. <laughs> I have I have always I've campaigned against default AI, <laughs> and I don't know if I've gotta rethink my stance on that after GT if GT Goku keeps it up. There are some characters that have somewhat used it successfully. Uh, Deborah in the past. Um, so, but, yeah. D default AI is definitely an off-putter for a lot of people, myself included. I don't think I've ever ran it. So, um, Fair play to Rats. And uh, Namek, I want to say that this could be like an outlier of a week four because... They had started to look like they were coming back. I think that they were 0-3. Um, in fact, I know they were 0-3. Because when I faced them, we were 3. I think we were 3-0. They were 0-3. And then they beat us. Uh, and then they won again so the week after. Was... Well, no, they won the week before. That was it. They, they won the week before against Royals. So they won two in a row. Um, and then I think this their first loss since, maybe? Um, but, yeah, they did look like they were on the comeback trail, but it doesn't look like that's the case anymore. Um, um, so it's kind of unfortunate. But I'm sure they'll get back to the swing of things. Uh, do you have anything else to, to mention, guys? Uh, oh, I think one, one thing I was going to say, I, re I don't think Rugrats had one tag before this week. I'm, I could be wrong, but I'm no, pretty sure they had, might be Rugrats. So I, mentioned it, I think I mentioned it in the last cast. They had zero tags all season. Um, yeah, exactly. So this this was the first time you see you tag, you win. That's how it goes, guys. It's a tag. Yeah, it's a team up. It's a team. Yeah, that'd be nice. Yeah, see, that, that's what cinema needs a bit more of, the tagging thing. See? Uh, you need to beat your guys up into doing that. Ruffled no, yeah, they're... shape. Uh, yeah, they're resilient. Um, I do want to say, um, for both these teams, actually, both these teams have at least one character qualifying. Uh, two, if you count good tanks. Um, well, for Rugrats, and uh, Namek actually has two characters that qualify. One that barely qualified. Uh, I'm guessing it's Pycon and Late Piccolo. That's my educated yeah, exactly. guess. Exactly. Pycon is the one that barely qualified. He was a thousand and four damage away from not qualifying, hmm. or at least ten, or I mean, 
technically a thousand five because fifty k is the average. I feel like this is the first time PyCon's been in that uh, the the all star bracket, shall we call it, or the you know fifty uh... k. I feel like it is because last time I think I know one season he was on GT and he did. Um... I think he did either well or semi well I on think it... both GT and Cinema. But I think this is the I think this is the first time that we know PyCon is in. Yeah, I don't. I don't think any yeah, other two season... seasons were iffy. I felt like it was he was between forty and forty five k. The other two seasons. This is the first time he's uh, thresholded into that fifty k barrier. If I'm not mistaken, I think. I actually I do think PyCon was part of the one of some of the other events that happened around All Stars, which is why it's confusing. Yeah, I would imagine. Um, uh, but anyway, yeah. Shall we get moving right. on to match number yep. four? Uh, yeah. Okay, match number four. We have the abbreviated matchup RW versus GT. Um, <laughs> so, to start this match, we had honestly quite a strong start with uh, Marju versus Sin Shenron. Uh, two. For RW, probably their best, I would say, but not not with overall confidence considering how 18 did this match. Um, and Sin for GT is one of their better members, more consistent at the very least. Um, so in this match, both teams tagged twice. Um, you can fact check me on that if you want, but I'm fairly confident on that one. Um, and we had 18 doing 87,000, um, just being an absolute menace in GT's side. And as I was saying about Sin, he's pretty good. He did 58,000, he was trying. Um, I mean, for me, the main talking point, obviously, uh, because Jero didn't do very well. Jero was against 18. Which I feel like is the worst matchup you could ever wish to have um, for Jero against an Android. So that that was unfortunate for GT. It was in, it was in there. Well, also, uh, what did you say about the tags? There any factor? Uh, I four tags, two each team. Uh, yes, that is really correct. Two, yeah. two on each team. That's cool. Um, but yeah, I feel like that matchup really skewed the match, the Jero 18 one, uh, because Jero is quite effective when grabbing, and obviously you can't grab some and take someone's key away from them if they're an android, so it's kind of unfortunate. But overall, I mean, RW did really well, deserved the win, and uh, I think GT, they had Baby out, right, so it was always going to be a bit more likely that they would lose um, considering how good he um, is for them but um, yeah, fair, fair play to RW uh, Destiny, you feel like you want to say something? I mean honestly just like at least looking at the lineup it's like uh, I don't think Roshi has been super good for GT lately um, no. back, back on that uh, Jero is or, uh, uh, Roshi is actually oh actually he's 41k never mind he's uh, third best yeah um it's uh, Jero and Sin that are great um which is surprising because Sin was normally one of their better characters last season but I think he's just being thrown in an unfortunate situation um RW though um I, I don't think they're ever getting Tien back but you know um Good on them for, you know, doing a build that on Tien that doesn't require him to be on EL. And obviously, they got 18 working. Majub is... Oh, well, Majub. He is a really good character. <laughs> oh, God, yeah. <laughs> but, no, like, seriously, it's like, for... I, um, I'll say this for the entire season, because... I know, I know in the season where RW got that insane win streak, everyone 
basically said it was based on the back of and Vegeta, but you know, RW is proving that they don't need and Vegeta to win. No. Alan and I don't I don't think anyone uh and anyone disbelieves that either because Maju eighteen are look really good. Oh god yeah. Can you can you imagine this team when M is back though? Eighteen Majub and Vegeta. Oh. Okay, they lose Tapion, but like, well, oh my they God. lose they lo they lose Tapion, Yamcha, and Tien. That's true, but they gain um, they gain and Vegeta and Yashirobi. But especially the and Vegeta part is kind of uh, it's, and it's true, <laughs> kind of scary. Um, and uh, at least before we you don't want to tap up waiting too long, but. Before we, before we go uh, to what Nap has to say, um, for both these characters, they actually both have two characters that qualify. For uh, RW, no surprise, is 18 and Majub. And uh, GT is Baby Vegeta and Super Saiyan 4 Vegeta. Which is surprising, because I'm pretty sure most people assumed that Baby Vegeta wasn't doing as well this season. But he is currently there. He is currently fourth best character in the league. Yeah, he's, he's third he's if you third if you don't count Gotenks, text, which um, I'm gonna be honest. It's really it's really hard to keep saying not counting Gotenks when he's literally at the top. I, I Gotenks doesn't count in that sense, I don't think, because it's not. No, no, yeah, it, 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 it's just very hard because of you know, Gotenks being at the top and claiming the number one spot when I think he should at least be zero. <laughs> yeah, I know what you're saying. Nappa, do you have any thoughts? Oh, yeah. Um, even though GT didn't have Baby in this week, I was expecting a lot of heavy lifting from Super Saiyan 4 Vegeta because he's had a monster season this year. And he couldn't do his man's worth. He did, what, 35k or so? And I think that's... Even though Sin came through, I think if Super Saiyan 4 could have done his usual 50, 55k he's been doing, I think could have could have looked a lot different this match. Oh yeah, definitely. And I don't know if I can say anything about RW that hasn't been said yet, but just Android 18 is just looking a lot more like 17. <laughs> In terms of damage numbers every week, and I'm just getting, I'm just getting scared. Bruh. It's, it's, eighteen's always had it in her, but this, now we're just coming out finally this year. Remember, remember this is the same eighteen that um, Res wanted rid of for a couple of seasons because they were kind of, like, she was being really frustrating, um, and so they got, did the old early Goku loan two seasons in a row. Now she's back, and she is definitely back. Um, so. I, know, I know they, I'm pretty sure they did say this season as well. It's like they actually wanted to, they weren't going to do it a third time because they actually wanted to keep 18 for, to see how she is. And yeah, they, I don't think they regret it. They, they definitely don't. Um, yeah, she's been a monster this season. So no, Yeah, I'll say, keep control on spam Android builds. It's filth, absolute filth. Disgusting. You know, I heard. I, you know, I, I know he said key control after a while, but I really thought he said keep control, and I was like, uh, yeah, how do we do that when 17, 13, 18 are running? Around? <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> Bruh. Right. Uh, but, yeah, I'm ready to move on. I am also ready to move on. Oh, well. We can skip the next well, match, I... but I'm ready to move on. <laughs> uh, uh, let's let's stay on match five. <laughs> no, let's let's never go to match five. Speaking of match five, well, I I, I, I don't think uh, Kaiju would I don't think Kaiju would uh, mind if we uh, skip this one. Well, <laughs> no, no, let's, I, I don't want to take X Man spotlight here. Okay? Oh, yeah, can't, can't skip this. No. One. Okay. To be fair, X Man. This match. Um, Basically proved why a certain 100% form is uh, the second best character in the league right now. This is true. I can at least gloat about that. Everything else, though, can well actually I can also gloat about I'm Cooler. True. He did all right, but everything else can get in the bin. Uh, anyway, <laughs> match number five, 
Cold Kingdom versus Hybrids. Now, mm -hmm. um, this, despite my, you know, pessimism and wanting to talk about this match, it was a good match. A very good match. Uh, was it also, like, with a bar? It was, yeah, it was within a bar at the end. It was literally two characters on the last bar. So it, it was a close match. So that was, that, that was you know, entertainment for everyone else, apart from me, who was uh, biting his nails. Um, yeah, so we had Zarbon versus Ultimate Gohan to start with. Now, they, I... <laughs> Going like talking about before the match, that was the match I ex like. That was who I expected them to start. So, as counterintuitive as it seems, because Zarbon got owned, um, I feel like he was still the best option to start. Uh, but he did get owned. Um, so Zarbon did I think about twenty five thousand like in damage. I, he did about 30,000, but with Eternal Life on Ultimate Gohan, it didn't really seem like he did as much. But he did about 25,000 going down. Um, there was one tag in the whole match, and that was from Hybrids, from Mr. Sword Trunks. Um, and I'm going to fact check you on this. You can fact check me on this, but I know that my team definitely didn't tag, because we. I just remember screaming tag to everyone, and they didn't do it. Um, uh, yeah, uh, you're right. It was just sword trunks. Yep, and um, the MVP technically is 100% Freezer because he did the most damage. He did 87,000. He was a Mr. Uh, pop off. Uh, uh, so you could uh, you could say it's also Gohan. That that's what I was gonna say. Technically, it's in terms of damage, it's Freezer. Or Ultimate Gohan, technically. Yeah, but in terms of who in did terms the of most pure damage, damage, it's a hundred. It's a hundred percent because but, he did twenty more than he did twenty thousand more. But yeah. But my like, if I was doing it just on like not looking at the numbers, I would say Team Gohan was the MVP because of like how far down hybrids were mm -hmm. because of a hundred percent freezer and call it popping off. Um, like he brought it back in a big way. They were about 60k uh, K down, um, and he just came in and just blitzed through everyone. Uh, it didn't even, like, it almost felt like it wasn't that hard work after he got through Freezer. Like, Freezer uh, did a lot more damage to him than Jace did, because Jace did 7,000 right. this week. Um, I, I, I will note that while you guys did do different boosts, it basically could almost be the same, because... They're both for characters that you think would, you know, get those boosts. Yeah. You did closeout special, which uh, we can talk about it a bit. But uh, Biku Bonanza, which uh, I don't think has actually been used yet. Yeah. So. so uh, by the way, sorry, if I'm, sorry if I'm talking over you guys a lot. <laughs> that's okay. That's fine. Uh, you're trying to explain things. So, B2 yeah. Bonanza uh, is, is basic base. Oh god, carry on. Base, it is basically you get a free E plus one. You get your, you basically get a broken glow without the, without the negatives of a health bar loss from, you know the, from the halo or the uh, negative effects of uh, just broken glow itself. So no super minus and no attack minus, and you get a green aura. Closeout special, we have seen this before, but this was, I think, the first time it was actually used by a character that didn't come out last. Mm -hmm. um, which is Savior, Sparking Clubus, Power Rage, and Green Aura, which, honestly, for, you know, 100% Frieza is really good because he is Power Body and Next Power. And Power Rage, honestly, just... It's just a bonus. I don't know, it just, it just fits Frieza for some reason for a 100% form. Yeah. Um, the the main definitely the sparking plus the fact that it lasts fifty percent longer. Um, obviously, mm -hmm. he has it gives him savior, so he comes in with power body. But also uh, because he has a max power mode B one, we thought well, it kind of feels really evil to have a character that not only has power body coming in, but you can exploit it and let him go back mm -hmm. up several times. Um, 
So you know, what, you know, want to know what's funny? They probably could have definitely done closeout special on King Gohan too, considering you know his stuff. Oh, 100 percent. And he has some max power would be one as well. Yeah, hundred percent. He could he could have used it for like the the same effect, but also different. If you know what I mean. His. I mean, they would have take they would have probably had taken Savior off because you only run Savior, but yeah. Yeah, but it, it would have been more, like, for him, it would have been more for the B2s, whereas for Freezer, it's... I mean, the B2s are a big plus, don't get me wrong, but a lot of it's, like, if he doesn't use the a B2, body. it's, like, he has power body, so it's, like, really good. Um, but, yeah, um, it, it was a fun match. I won't lie, obviously, there is a little bit of salt in the air, but... Um, nah. um oh, What, carry on? What were you going to say? Oh, no, I'll talk after Nappa does. Yeah. Oh, yeah, um... Oh. 100% Frieza, thank you for using close up special worth an entire 6 Zenny instead of what Bardock did against Cinema a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> uh, but I you mean, got the win that's though! Not that, that, that's not even completely your fault, you think? Well, it's not, but it, I, it still felt really bad, okay? <laughs> <laughs> hey, at least we saw it. Yeah, I, we did see it, okay? But uh, if he if he did go, come in early, he could have done these numbers Frieza at this way. Yeah, he probably could have probably could have done the numbers he did this week, which we'll get into. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but overall, uh, Jace, I have no words for you. You destroy my team early in the season, and then you do this against not my team. I I am sad. Though I also do synthesize with Cold having this. Well, it's a terrible choke. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. He could have. He had it. All he had to do was 10,000! <laughs> it's a joke! He, well, 10,000 more. Like, he would have had to do 17k, and he would have won. Yeah, King uh, Gohan just wanted to sucker punch him out of that ultimate. Just, just too bad. Yeah. Wait, to be fair, uh, I don't completely blame Jace. Team was on. What character would you want against Team Gohan, Super Saiyan 2, firing B2 bonanzas for. Uh, yeah, in, uh, yeah, his, uh, two bar, by the way, which is a one bar now. Yeah. Well, like my King, answer to that would be 100% Freezer, because he was the only yeah, one that did no, anything like, <laughs> to him. I, I know, it's like, I know, I know Jason 7k. I think, well, yes, you have reason to blame Jace. You can't completely blame him. No. Not completely. Which is, and honestly, I know you threw him out at the start. The person I blame, for, the person I'd blame for this is Zarbon. What? No, oh, it's heresy. Wait. He didn't even do 30k. He didn't, but he was going. I, I'm not gonna lie. He was. Going... I know he was against ultimate. And no, I'm not saying he was against ultimate. I'm not saying. Blame him because, you know, he did bad or anything. I was saying, if he did more, you wouldn't have to have to have Jace try to finish. That's true, but he still did over three times as much as Jace. In fact, four times as much as Jace. That's why I blame Jace. Uh, well, so... <laughs> I mean, I'd, I'll say, I'll take a little different angle on this. I think having Zarbon with his grabs that require the ground under him be on Kami's lookouts. Uh, yeah, your, your map choice is kind of weird. On uh, I, I, yeah, I will I will preface that by saying the options were Kami's lookout or water maps with a hundred percent freeze with no charge. So there's always hell. My my, my there's I, always there's hell. Hell of, well hell I remember being hell for all my characters as well. Like no <laughs> pun intended. Like. My characters love to be too. You all know this, so. I mean, hey, but it's a map. It's a map. You don't have to ever, you know, worry about people getting. That's true. That is. That is true. But. I'm just saying, it is always. It is always there, and it's. And you know, hey, uh, I have uh, fond memories of Zarbon grabbing me to death on that map. So. Yeah, but. Yeah. One man's, you know, it's a gain for Zarbon, but a loss for Freezer. This is basically we had a tough decision. That's all I'm saying about the map. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> I think it's, I think it's more of a, uh, more of a loss for Cooler there, but because yeah. you know Freezer's Nova Strike still kind of hit. Yeah. On hell, but Cooler and... Darkness Eye Beams would not be here very often. 
Uh, eh, that's maybe. Um, but to be, uh, to be fair, we're well. To be fair, that's maybe's where we're in the now. And uh, yeah, you want to know what's now? What's now? Uh, you have one character qualifying, and you already know which one it is because I already talked about it. But um, hybrids, they have uh, one. Teen. I know oh. it's teen. Yeah. Yeah. And he's the fi- he's the fifth best character. Yours is the second. <laughs> Bruh, we love having hundred percent free throw there. What was he saying, by the way, Napper? I feel like we cut you off a little bit. What, what uh, no, I was I was mostly saying that the map selection when it comes to Kami's lookout or uh, the space spaceship, Freeze spaceship, mm-hmm. they're just they're just designed to screw Zarbon and uh, Raccoon yeah. over most. Garlic. Oh, well, garlic, yeah. The, the what I would say is, as much as Zarbon's grabs are a big part sometimes, for base Zarbon it, and the build he's on, it's a lot less it, uh, it's, egregious. It's still, damage, it's still damage, and it's still stun. It still stings, but it's a lot less egregious. Uh, I'll, put, I'll put it this uh, way. I don't think he would have done much more on a normal map still against Alt Gohan. I feel like he still would have done Yeah, Yeah, I was going to get into that. It, uh, not, not, I'm, not, I'm not trying to like, throw any shade here, but... <laughs> You're lying. Cold... Throwing shade. <laughs> yeah, but Cold simply... You don't really have a when you just look at your team this year, who do you throw against Alt Gohan going first? Uh, you're just you're just kind of. I feel like you don't have an amazing option here. Uh, the overall. only option that I have is at the moment, who's done to be fair in most of his starting matchups well, is Tao, but he's not in this week. Um, Tao against Debora, he'll he'll do like near enough thirty thousand, like he'll get them low what? and then. Why did you bench Tao this week? Uh, partly. Actually, for, for, first, who was coming in for this week? Jace. Like, no, no, it was J- okay, yeah, so either Jace. way, you had to have Jason. Um, like, uh, I guess. But why did you bench Tao? Uh, because um, I felt like because of I felt the last time Tao was in was against Namek. Maybe? Can't remember now. Well, basically, his performance against Namek was not very good. He did 10,000. Um, and. Just. I don't, think he was, I don't think he was starting, though. He wasn't, that's true. But because he did 10,000 that week, it kind of made me think, hmm, I had question marks over him. Uh, so I brought Zarvon in anyway, because Zarvon has just been a consistent mm-hmm. performer. Even, even in list matchup, I know you said he did. 30,000, but 30,000, like, that's probably... Yeah, 30,000. Yeah. So, like, I mean, Zarbon's usually a consistent performer. Like, sometimes at the start, he will do well. Um, he did it against, like, Piccolo last season. He beat him. So, I, Zarbon, you can rely on to do 30,000 at least most of the time. So, that was part of the reason. Um... Part of the reason is I didn't want to bench Cooler or Freezer because that's not going to happen because uh, they're they're the backbone. Um, and yeah, that, that, well, that's it. They, were the, they were the ones that basically kept you in this match. <laughs> well, you said kept us in. We were winning at that point. It's all Jace's fault. God well, I mean, damn it, Jace. I mean, to be fair, to be fair, at the at least looking at stats, it uh, was basically. Freezer and Kulu versus Trunks, else, yeah. Ultimate Gohan and Team. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um, I don't know. I, I just think, well, yeah. To the reason for Zarbon, I just think Tao would have at least been able to damage Ultimate. Yeah, maybe. In hindsight, you're probably, probably. right. Yeah, probably right. Um, but because like. While while you while you do say that the grabs aren't as you know prominent without monster, it's not even for the damage. It's just the St- like the fact stun of like the they combos and stuff and stop them from doing having momentum. Yeah, yeah. I can see that. Yeah, I, think Which, uh... overall, I think the big issue is if you uh, use the grab like Rakuma or uh, Zarbon mm-hmm. on 
thin air at the bottom of the map. They're actually at a disadvantage. They most often, when that happens, they just get punched immediately without being able to block or anything. Mm -hmm. I think well, that's happened the most of the time. Well, on the well, on the ground, like, they have to get up and flip away. Yeah, then, then you get the loops and whatnot where it just... Or you just get the ability crazy. to block. Uh, anyway, I, uh... I, 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 I know we I know we love this match, but um, we should probably... Get I don't, and I'm happy to move on. Yeah, we <laughs> I, I think this match was cool, but I think the next one was a little better. <clears throat> this next uh, one yeah, was <coughs> cooler, right, okay. Um, yeah, so... Um... <laughs> or at least from a at least from a certain team's point of view, it was cooler. Uh, from another team's certain point of view, it was probably the uh, worst match of the week. Yeah, definitely. Uh, right, so we have Muscle versus Kaiju, or as I like to call it, Bardock versus Muscle. Uh, Bardock and Scouter versus uh, Big Boy. Yeah. Uh, so King Cold started the match for Muscle. Obviously, Bardock started the match for Kaiju. Um, I kind of expected Bardock to win that because historically every time that King Kong's gone against him it's not gone very well in my experience. Um, obviously, I mean there's not really much else to get into other than Bardock, 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 Bardock. Why don't you start Naffa? Um, tell us. Tell us the 140,000 elite performance Bardock. Second highest Bardock's. in elite history. Uh, it was... I couldn't even believe it was happening. I was half asleep when it was happening. I was, I was just sitting there. I was listening to the commentators. <laughs> Ryan, God bless your soul. I don't know what I would have done if that was happening to me. I'll preface it with that. Bardock starts, beats up King Cold, takes 10k. Bojack in, takes even less damage. Bojack completely out, trunks, puts up, you know, a respectable fight, I guess. And Bardock also beats him. Just start to finish. B2s. Dodging B2s. It's... It was just nasty. I don't know what to say. <laughs> In comes Broly with boost with the Super 2. And Bardock punches a little and tags out. And Scouter finishes Broly in a pretty even fashion. Except that... We had Nappa and Slug in the back. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you say even, and I, you say even, and I say a pity. Well, I mean, Broly and Scouter in the one we won, it was pretty even overall. Didn't, wait, didn't Bardock tag too? Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did tag after doing. So well, Bardock was still in the. Well, while Bardock was still in the back. Yes. Uh, <laughs> well, uh, I was, we'll, I was we'll saying say, that uh, Broly and Scouter, if it was. Between those two, it was pretty even, but in the whole yeah. scope of the match, it wasn't all that even. It was, it was, <laughs> Broly couldn't it get was, much more. It, it was pity trying to bring up Broly's stats after all those weeks. Um, yeah, I, uh, I, I mean, I don't even know. It's, he, it was such an absurd number. The performance, it just kept going. He dodged a point blank B2 from Bojack. I thought it, I was, for sure it was going to hit. So, a raw dodge it without Wild Sense? How, how does that so, happen? <laughs> Your lonely way Bardock next season, right? Uh, we gotta we gotta talk about that. <laughs> uh for baby Vegeta, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, the GT message me out. And uh, and, 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 and Frieza for uh, Frieza's baby, right? <laughs> yeah. I'm kidding. Um, but um, <laughs> what is it? Bardock. Actually, funny enough. Well, he has. Well, he he does work on his super savior big old build um this build is basically king cold's build but a different patara <laughs> or actually it basically was king cold's build when he was on cold what yep. is it attack one eternal life serious light body yeah that's exactly <laughs> the build actually what ai what ai trunks. Uh, trunks. trunks oh a little bit different on although king cold's also run trunks before so um yeah i mean they're they're both basically running almost the same build cold I Cold just instead of a uh, light body for him is running fighting spirit probably because you know he actually has decent P2s. He does, and well, he's also running blue AI. But this was basically a at the start it could have gone either way. It was fight of attack one serious eternal life characters. Yeah, uh, I, I feel like I see the 
big downside for that, for obviously mm -hmm. muscle, is the fact that um, I obviously I, I've had King Cold against Bardock. I think it was last season. Napper. I think we had the exact same starting matchup. Um, what I don't quite remember. I, I remember it. I remember it, and it was Bardock on not an Eternal Life build on like. It was a melee build, but not this build. Um, so that it was less good Bardock uh, versus King Cold on his same build, but uh, you know, the light body instead, and on uh, Freezer AI, and that was the 50k King Cold build, and he still lost. So I was really unsurprised when Bardock won. I was surprised by the margin of victory, but I was not surprised that Bardock won because man he's on he's on a scary ass build and mm. jesus like i don't know bardock has such a high like yeah. ceiling um yeah you you you, you want to know what's funny what what's funny scatter was supposed to be the last character that comes out and he came <laughs> in <laughs> bro he came in after bardock well, all I'm saying is, Scout is, hey, still, almost 40K. Scout is still better than Bardock, because Bardock hasn't done the 160k yet. So, you know, Bardock needed to do that, really. He needed to uh, kill all four characters. And, uh, um... <laughs> actually, you, you wanted it was really unfortunate, actually. What's that? Uh, well... Well, not as unfortunate. They had... Uh, both Royal... No, not Royal. Uh, Kaiju and Muscle have a character. Um, you know qualifying muscle is literally the best character in the league right now it's not go tanks uh yeah android 13 obviously and uh kaiju is oob they're free agent oh uh, you missed we have another one bardock no bardock Slug didn't actually. make it <laughs> Slug bardock actually, did not yeah. make it with 140,000. I, I yeah. think it's I, I think it's because partly because of that cleanup week I can't believe yeah, he had two bad ways. How, how much? What's he on average? Uh, he is right under Ultwing Gohan. Actually, you can see he's in the forty-nine thousand range. Oh, that one is only, so ridiculous! One of only three characters in the forty-nine thousand range. That sh honestly, all three of them should have made it. That's crazy. Yeah, I'll tell you what. I was crunching the numbers before stats came in. And I counted, if Bardock had stayed and done 6k more damage to Broly, he would have broken 50k average. Oh, so basically done sweep? <laughs> if, he, if, he... if he finished the health bar he started from Broly, he would have been uh, 150. No, I mean, he, he would or, have done... you know, or, or, you know, if Scatter yeah. just decided to be a bitch and bring him back in. That too. <laughs> yeah, that too. <laughs> yeah, he was 6k damage off this week from getting uh, All-Star. Well, at least you saved... Slug from coming in and having clean up. Uh, Imagine if Clug, Slug uh, came in and <laughs> had to do clean up a loss of his play. Uh, you, you, you know what? I call this a win in my books because you want to know why? Why? Uh, yeah, I remember an entire like three months of uh, Kaiju going against my most consistent character on his EL build that is basically almost exactly the same that Bardock runs. I uh, call this, uh, yeah, you owe me. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I'm, ki I'm kidding, but this is, it, it's quite funny. <laughs> they yeah, get an elite on an EL character after, you know, testing against an EL character for like three months. <laughs> yeah, I mean, here's the thing, right? Because we, when we came into last off right? how come androids can have Cell and all these teams have this really dominant EL character and we have Scouter doing 41k? What's up with that? <laughs> All right, let's just uh, let's just take that EL and put it on a uh, Bardock. <laughs> exactly. And uh, you know what? Let, let, let's take that attack. That. Let's let, take that attack one two. Um, yeah, and then you know keep the light body. There you go. Man, I, I swear that you was watching our uh, our King Cold builds from the last like two seasons. And... Like, let's let's put King Cold's build on someone. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> You, 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 you know what? You know what this makes it sound like. What? The perfect build is just attack one EL. I think it actually, unironically, could be because yeah. it's fixed a lot of characters for me before. Actually, you know, you know what's funny? I, um, only throwing a little bit of shade because you're, uh, you're, 
Ed, obviously. Um, you could get an Elite. I think if you did it on Cooler. Or Frieza. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my hey, uh, hey, I mean, it worked for Bard <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it worked for Bardock. <laughs> Maybe. He is on your master list, by the way. Oh, I know. I know he's on my master list. He's on my coveted <laughs> I want him list, but we'll see. Uh, yeah, I think, I think now that he's done it... Hey, you have two characters that have been known to almost sweep teams or sweep teams on your master list now. <laughs> yeah. Hey, oh. That's true. I think one of them you can get because he's bad. No, he's, he's not bad. bad. Come on. Well, he's just not been. He's been performing bad. Not like a, he's a bad character. He's been performing bad. That's true. Yeah. Well, I, I can't re refute that. But last thing I'll say before I get on <laughs> King Cold build, you know, it's cool. I, I I think I quite like it now. But original idea was just going with cells like attack one serious savior heal, mm -hmm. but we just didn't have enough saviors. I'm like, but it's really good, so. Yeah. You thought, no, oh, yeah, King Cold, no. do it instead. No, 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 I know what you need, um, just, uh, just get another closeout special, hope he comes in. <laughs> I mean, it, oh, I mean, for, I mean, I'm gonna be honest, that build with closeout special, I'd actually be scared of it. Well, um, you were scared of it, it did 15k with one <laughs> Was he on EL that week, though? Yeah. It was. Same build with Closeout Specialist. I am uh, back checking it's right now. What, what we played? Four? Was it four? Uh, yes. Um, it, no, it was four because we're East Cape, remember? Oh, yeah. Um. Oh, wow. This is, wow, this is actually the build. Well, I'm, I'm scared. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> I, was scared, I was scared of this and he came out last. <laughs> Uh, Are we ready to get moving on to uh, match number numero seven? Uh, before, before I'll yeah. shout out our other all star who's number one in tags this league. He's learned from Kaiju. So you're, far, you're, you're seven tags. Getting... Right now, the season record for tags is nine. That's been done by Nappa twice, once by 19, and once by Cyborg Tom. Oh, you're. Mm. I, I know you shout out Ooh, but what about your boy Slug right there? He's right there. Well, well Slug's just great. He, he just um, Royals gave him. You, gave a Slug. You, slug beat up you Royals. Know, you, know, you know the tech put demonic bargain on a giant character and actually pray that he works. That's exactly it. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm just um. My advice: don't run defense on him. He does no damage. <laughs> oh dear. Heck, he's pretty good. The spam, the spam's really nice. Right. Yeah, vote Kaiju for All Star. Thank you. Vote Kaiju <laughs> right. for All Star. Propaganda. We don't uh, allow that on here. Um, <laughs> apart from. Like, I mean, to be um, I mean, to be honest, like, to be honest, like, there's a lot of characters in All Stars that I might act that I actually really want to vote for, but I don't have. You know, we don't have all day. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Exactly. Right. On to match number seven. We have Boo Saga versus Earth Defenders. Now, this is the match that did not fail to deliver. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, th they both, these two they teams... Both had the same, they both had the same record before this week, by the way. They did. These two so teams... So, one, one, one of these teams are going to be 6-1. and one. Yeah. And the two really, really scary teams this season. Um, to start mm -hmm. the match, we had Evil Boo versus Krillin. Um, both, I think, run defense too, but Evil Boo runs Eternal Life, whereas Krillin runs like, you know, Dende's and other Pataris as supplements. His oh. World. Um, oh, well, also, um, Krillin's is just to negate his His defense negatives. minus, yeah. So, Krillin's which, start uh, on the Which back. honestly, like, still really works, though, but it's Evil Boo, so it does yeah. lots of damage. Um... We had one tag in this entire match again, and that's from ED. Again, yeah, you can fact check me on that one, but that's why I, I got down earlier. Um, no, yeah, no, yeah, you're right. Uh, we it have was mid Vegeta too. Mid Vegeta. Speaking of which, he 
He tried his damnedest for for ED to get the win. Uh, he did 62,000. He was trying, but unfortunately, Mr. Buhan uh, for Busaga turned up this week. He's not really done loads this season. Uh, if you talk to Busaga's coach, Dorgard, he he's been one of their worst performers performers this season, other than maybe Vegito. Um, but he showed up. He oh. really did show up. He did 64,000. And... I can fact check you on that. Uh, let's see. Uh, Vegito, 39k. Gohan Boo. Uh, yeah. Gohan Boo and Vegito. Literally the two worst characters. And they're both around like 40k average. Mm. So this is this was the week where Buhan really showed up. So I think they were happy with that. Uh, Krillin, as well, I remember when I was looking at the stats, did fairly well. Uh, a lot of this, and I remember this match, came down to, uh, I think I don't think Nam did spectacularly, but Mid-Goku uh, was the main one who just didn't really do much of anything. He got really, like, I think he was going against Buhan, and he got kind of just owned. Like, he couldn't, didn't have much time to do much. He couldn't uses B1s that much and he was just it, basically constantly under pressure um, and yeah it, it, it was kind of rough uh, from ED's perspective uh, Nappa we'll go to you first do you have any thoughts on this match? Oh uh, yeah it was pretty even overall I feel it because Krillin my man I will not stop saying his name on Capsule Cast he's, he's great I don't know he's he killing it on him somehow uh, other than that, ED, just <sighs> mid Goku. I don't know. I just True. he didn't have it this week. Other than that, uh, they really did try. Oh. Now has been their free agent this year, and uh, yeah. that hasn't disappointed. I feel overall, I think he's done his role compared to uh, the price they got him for. So, uh, who's just had the had the edge this year over uh, everyone? ED. I do want to say, for actually a considerable amount of time, because Nam took out Vegito really handily, actually, uh, ED was in the lead, and it was literally because of Buhan that they were back. Yeah. It was mid-Goku. But if, uh, if, mid, if mid-Goku did perform like he normally has been doing, ED could have won this week. Yeah. Because the spirit bomb would have taken out either Majin Buu, who had like one health bar, or you know, Buhan, who had like just above two when mid Goku came in. But I will also say it's probably not fully mid Goku's fault because mid Goku doesn't normally come in last by himself. Yeah, we've said, I remember specifically multiple times of like when mid Goku's been at his best, he. Like it has a character to the tag too. Yeah, and it, what'll happen is he'll transform and then tag, and then he's like, "Uh oh, he's coming back in as Super Saiyan with full blast stocks and savior and savior." Yeah, or so... even even then, just in base form, like the Spirit Bomb alone is a big threat. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, but but, yeah, but he's a, he's one of those characters that just if he's last, he's stranded last. It's not what you want to see if you're ED. Also, I mean, Buhan was just on his game right now. Buhan was playing like an android. He was just face, 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 face. Like he was sticking there. It wasn't. It wasn't the best oh. time for me to go to. Actually, yeah. Actually, from watching it right now, literally, they never allowed Goku to do anything. Actually, they were just so aggressive. Yeah, that's what I mean. It was it was hyper aggression, which you don't always see, and it's kind of it's kind of rough when you do see it and you have that. It, it from experience oh, no, when you ha- for, yeah from experience when you have to deal with that and you have a a B one like spamming character. Uh, it's mm-hmm. kind of it's kind of rough when you have no time. Especially for it. especially when it's one as powerful as Mid Goku. Yeah. Who, if he does get anything off, because he did get AB2 off, and it did, like, over a bar to uh, Buhan. Mm. But, 
Uh, I just want to clarify before we move on. Uh, for both teams, both teams have uh, two characters that qualify. For Boof Saga, we have Majin Buu, because he honestly has not really stopped performing since his leap. Been doing good. And, uh, and we also have Evil Buu. And uh, for ED, we have Krillin, which I think is actually fairly new. You, you all start voting. Because I know he's been consistent, but I don't think he had, was consistent enough for the past few seasons to be an all-star. I think last year he was like 48, and one of those 48,000 type people. Yeah, he was like just on the cusp of it. And we also have mid of Vegeta. Man, a lot of Vegetas in, in contention this year. Yeah, they're always this Vegeta this, Vegeta that. God damn it. Get rid of Vegeta. Remove him. Uh... Please don't. That gets rid of half my character. <laughs> no, uh, yeah. Vegeta, mid Vegeta, I feel like this. It feels like the first time he's qualified, or at least that I can remember. Um, so that, I think it's—I think it feels—it it feels like it's not the first time because of you know and Vegeta, Majin Vegeta, that are always constantly in All Stars. Yeah. Which, uh, funny enough, and Vegeta, not in All Stars this year. Mad to think. And Vegeta is. And Vegeta is uh, actually at forty k. He is um, currently the worst. Actually, no, it's not. But he's the second worst VD right now. That is crazy. To be fair, I think it's just you know he's constantly in like in the later half or he's benched. Hmm. So he doesn't really have. He's not really been having his time to shine. But hey, it's, it's fine when you know it's mid. letting characters like Krillin, Mid Vegeta, and Base Mid Goku do well. Which is this is the first season we've seen Base Mid Goku. True. Um, anyway, shall we get moving on to the last one before we, you know, have the other stuff. The predictions and all that. Um, yeah, so the last match we have are Royals versus Androids, the second divisional of the week. And man, this was a lot more one sided than I thought it would be. Um, so, Royals, they started out with. Uh, Deborah, and we had Android sign out with Cyborg Tau, which uh, Deborah wins it out um, and tags. Remember that because I remember him tagging out on. He was in a, in his second bar. Um, he was in his yellow when yeah. seventeen. So he and tags. He, uh, he, and he's, uh, actually, no, he was in his last bar seventeen B two. Oh, okay. He was near enough in his second, but he maybe he's, yeah. But I knew he tagged. Wow, out. he was actually almost dead. Never mind. Well, he, he was. He was literally a combo away from death. Well, he tagged. I remember he tagged. Uh, no, no, yeah, he tagged. But he was a combo away from death when he tagged. There was also a tag on Android side uh, for someone because I've got one tag for each team down here. Oh. Um, it the the. <sighs> I can't believe that Royals did it with a three-man victory. Metacooler and Deborah being the pop-offers. But you can't no. even discount King Vegeta because he also did 48,000. I, uh, I think I know what helps with that three-man. 17, not doing much. When you supernova 17 in the face for him missing a grab, you know, it's kind of hard. Yeah. And he has no killing, by the way. Yeah, that's rough. Um, and I suppose it doesn't help the fact that Android's best also performer Cy Cyborg was... Tower tag. I, I did think that it might have been Cyborg Tau, but I couldn't remember. It, I... it, 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 it was Tau. Yeah. So. Uh, Cell was Android's best, doing 44,000. Um, which, you know, that's a rough it. week when your best is doing 44k um, and you've got 17 and sell in um, that that's not usually good news for androids um, uh, yeah, actually you want to know what's funny it's uh, it's not good news when android 17 is doing the worst out of the week yeah that's pretty terrible usually um, 
I think, from what I remember looking at stats, Cyborg Tau did 40,000. I think Super Cyber, 17. Uh, Super 17 was above 30. Every single it, character on Androids was above 30. I know that because I remember checking. Yeah, because uh, we have. So, in order, we have 30k for. We have around 30,000 for Android 17. Around thirty-two thousand for for Super Seven. Around forty thousand for Cyborg Tau, and around forty-four thousand. So, while for Royals we have, and I just I just want to get that out of the way. Remember, it was three man. Uh, we have around sixty-six. We have around almost forty-nine thousand for King Vegeta. Yeah, almost around sixty-five thousand for Meta Cooler, and almost around sixty-seven thousand for the Bora. And we had their character zero damage out, for Margin for Gia. Their, char their <laughs> character, yeah, the character was out, out this week was Baby. Yeah. Uh, all I'm gonna say is Royals looks really, really scary. Uh, Napa, do you have any thoughts? Yeah. No. <laughs> King Vegeta, most of King Vegeta's damage came against Cell, for which I put on, <laughs> uh, I think Cell left on like half a bar. Half a bar you know what, he, you he know what that him. is, Nappa, don't you? He's remembering all the times he was on Kaiju and Cell scarred here at TV, I swear <laughs> to vaporize him. <laughs> I think King Vegeta was actually in our playoff uh, series against Androids in 2020. King Vegeta was our best in that series. <laughs> <laughs> Mad. Hey, I mean, he, he's proven himself. He has. Because he, he, he did fight Fel this, in this match too, by the way. That's what I mean. He, he, he got revenge for the Kaiju playoff matches. He was not he was not a happy bunny. Yeah, there was one time he attacked like four times in one match against Androids and we still lost. Can you believe it? I can't. <laughs> Uh, I think uh, Ellie's going from Salt to Wow well, Rose to Scare Team, and you know, Androids is still having a good record despite their faults. Um, going into who qualifies, by the way, we have for Royals, we have Matt Cooler. Three characters. Ooh. Three characters. Almost four. Almost, but the board doesn't make it by two thousand. Oh, that's so annoying. I want the board and bro. I know I know meta is one. I'm guessing it's Margin Meta, Majin, baby. baby. Yep. That's mad. And uh, I just want to look where he is quick. Uh King is Okay, King. King is doing the worst on their team right now, but he's still above. He's still 35k average. Mm. I think it's just because he's been either having rough matchups or cleanup. Bit of both, I think. And for androids, we have uh, one. Uh, I'm guessing that's 17 with his elite earlier. With his two near elites, yes, or his elite and near elite. It is really helping his average. Um, so yeah. Interesting. Uh, does anyone else have any final remarks about this match? Other than Royals are awesome and Androids better look next time. You no, know, I, <laughs> you know, I like how this match and I like how this match ended. How it started. Oh yeah. With the Bora versus Cyborg Tail. <laughs> It did. The Bora. And, uh, and, and, and you know, um, Cyborg Tau almost ruined Majin Vegeta's stats. He almost killed the Bora. <laughs> I remember now, yes, because I wanted the Majin Vegeta to come out. Oh. And, um, uh, yeah, he was prepared for another All Stars of Majin Vegeta, by the way. That's if he gets voted in. Well, we were prepared for another all-star voting with Majin Vegeta in it, because I'm pretty sure he's been in it every season. Yeah. Well, he's in there for a good reason every time. Also because it's, he does a lot of damage every time. That's a lot of damage. Also, I'm pretty sure Majin Vegeta was on a Super 2 build that they've changed into. They've now. gone back to it, yeah. So, that's fine. Uh, 
Oh yeah, they also had B2 Bonanza on sale. Oh. Oh yeah, I remember now, yeah. And uh, and Royals had uh, no boost. <laughs> oh, the confidence, the sack. And it paid off, they didn't need any apparently. So. I'm... There you go. But uh, I am ready to move on. I am also ready to move on. Are you good, Napa? To... Yeah. yeah, let's go. Cool. So, okay, we have the the tier list here. Um, obviously, I feel like last week we had a lot of surprise candidates with Bobbity and Future Gohan. This week, uh, there still are those surprise candidates with uh, GT Goku up there, Dodoria to an extent. But it feels a lot more, in my opinion anyway, settled. Um, Bardock, we all know, can pop our Freezer, Pycon, 18. But uh, like, there, there's a lot at the top anyway. Um, at the bottom, uh, late Piccolo being at the bottom is ridiculous. Um, anyone else down there? And it's, uh, and it's not even like a bench warmer either. Yeah. There's, uh, there's, uh, let's see, there's Mid Goku. Yep. There's, uh, Future Gohan. Yep. King Cold. Yep. Uh, Bojack, Nail, and Late Pickle, who we, and Hercule, who we expect to not be down there. Yep, not, I don't think any of those characters really, even, even. Even Jace, as much as he annoyed me, he should not be down. Like none of them should be down that far. Um, so that is it, very surprising. One, one, one day we'll get it. So there is no one below the bench warmer. What I will say is it's a worrying trend mark for King Cold. If you look at last week and this week as well, uh, it's not you know, good. It's it's worrying for a lot of characters. Yeah. A lot of characters because Herc is uh, like around the middle last week, now he's at the bottom. And then. Uh, there's just a lot of like trends. Like King Cold's near the bottom. Trunks is. The adult Trunks has literally been at around the same tier for most of the season. Jiren's at 20k. That's true. I don't, I don't know if we'll see that. That's not. That's not. That's not a trend, but it's just that's a weird one. Janemba's been floating around that ten to thirty k one. Yeah, that's not. That's not great either. Uh, Nafa, do you have any thoughts on the tier list of the Barlock being yeah, supreme king? Uh, yeah, I'd like to keep him there. <laughs> uh, we'll try to keep him. On. <laughs> Other than that, it's um, I mean Jiren. It's he was doing clean up, uh, not not clean up this week necessarily, but he's uh he's gonna yeah. Then we know he's he's so good. <laughs> you don't need to worry about it. But yeah. Jace, Bojack, King Cold, also even Nail. I had a high, higher hope for, for Nail this season, but and they're gonna figure it out. I'm sure. Yeah, definitely. Like I say, for me, it's it's King Cold being in the bottom two tiers two weeks in a row. That's a bit, a little bit scary for uh, Muscle. But you know, there's a tried, true, and tested build an AI there for them if they want to want to use it. And I know for a fact that uh, it'll it'll do it'll do good. So yeah. Um, want to get moving on to Perder Addictions. And also the uh, the power rankings. If you want to talk about that a little bit. Oh uh, yeah. Sweet. Talk about that uh, a little bit. Be nice if I went the right way. There we go. Uh, right. So uh, got the power rankings. If you wanna, anyone wanna say anything quickly about this, or you know, any quick comments? Uh, maybe? Top two didn't change. There was a. It's nice to see Kaiju go from tenth to sixth. That's a big, big jump. Yeah, it, it, the elites really go a long way. This, uh, 
Moose, yeah. Moose is already at six, and we're not even halfway through the season. Uh, well, yeah. oof. we kind of are. Oh my! Pretty well, much, just about. Kind of. We're like just we're like just past the halfway, like just past the halfway mark. Yeah. Um. Uh, anyway. Can we get started with predictions? Because it's, uh, it's I think it's off. prediction time. Um, so, first match we have Rugrats versus Kaiju. How interesting. Napa, do you have any secrets to reveal before we uh, hmm. throw this out? Uh, if... okay. Well, I'll tell you, we're boosting this week. That's pretty interesting. Hmm. So, we're gonna have this Bardock build that did like. Well, 140k, but he's gonna have start kit this week. Ooh, I, we love to see I think that. it's been used before, but it looks really uh, interesting. You used it's it, been, right? It's it, it, yeah, it, it it's been used, but um, I don't think it's divisional yet. Well, now it's coming out, and uh, Scouter's been benched this week for us, and. Uh, That's great. Yeah, we're just, it's a really big, big week. The Kai's pretty even, so pitching out a win here would be really huge. Yeah. Interesting. Um, build wise, it's pretty much the same stuff. Eel Bardock, Demonic Bargain, Slug, and uh. Regular Nappa build, regular yeah. Oob build. Yeah, Oob has Savior available to him this week, but yeah. It should be a fun match. Rugrats have been, uh, I'm afraid of gold things, I'll just be honest. <laughs> I mean, how do you play against that thing? I don't know. Uh, uh bring your bring your own heal character in first about half half <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Oh, well. I, I'm going to vote Kaiju purely because I I'm on the Bardock hype train from last week and I also just think if Nappa like we haven't. I feel like we haven't seen the best of Napa this season, uh, and that's that's got to come at some point. Taggy, spammy Kappa Napa has got to appear, and I feel like it might be this match. So I'm gonna go with Kaiju. Destiny. Ah uh, yeah, hold on. Um, sorry, I've been just thinking about it. Something about it. Um, I also take it for granted that you're voting for your own team, Napa. Oh, of course. I mean, <laughs> right. uh, I mean we're expecting uh, Sol Junior to be out this week. So, was their week been their weakest, I believe? Even uh, though GT Goku had a big week, I think Mardox should be the edge there. GC Goku's actually still their weakest one. Um. At least thinking about thinking about it, I'm going to say Kaiju just because I'm gonna be honest. Like Goob's doing really well, Sog is doing really well, and Bardock clearly just had a new sweet performance. But for Rugrats, um, actually Aurelius are weakest. Yeah. Whoa, really? But oh, it's also oh, yeah, Aureli. Most of most of characters just have not been doing great this season. Um. It's really just been off the back of Kid Trunks and Gotenks that at most of the matches been close. But, I mean, I expect it to at least be closer. And I don't know if they'll bring Gotenks in. But that bar that Bardock build just seems so hard to beat, man. Powerful. Definitely got Mega Power on the side. So is who is that a vote to, Destiny? Is that Kaiju? Oh, I already said Kaiju. You did say Kaiju. Okay, so that's 3-0 to Kaiju. Uh, although, I think... I'm not discounting Rugrats, because I think Trunks and Goten... Mm. Even a Rayleigh could come out as a surprise package, despite what she's done this season. If she's in. Um, match number two, we have Dirt versus Androids. Um... I, I really want to give it to Dirt, but I just think it's going to be too difficult for them because 
obviously was talking earlier about the 19 thing. I wouldn't even think they can't even really do that in this match because androids and okay even if you decide to I'm not sure they have the Zenny to do it but if they spent the Zenny uh, and they brought 19 in for Herc it wouldn't make much of a difference because half of androids is passive charges so you can't grab them uh, so Bobbity won't be the best against them either uh, I just feel like there's a lot of rough, rough matchups in this match specifically I mean, obviously um, he was coming in if, we're not, if no one's paying attention to that. What did you say, sorry? I can also say he's coming in if no one's paying attention to that. Oh yeah, go on, go on. Who's uh, Salsa is coming back in for Derp. Mm -hmm. And 16 is coming back in for Androids. So there's a potential of at least two passive charges. Well, there will be at least two passive charges on Android, if not three. If 16, 17, and uh, 17. I will say... Cell might be bench because he has not been. He's the one with the longest bench out for androids. And Dirt. Honestly, it might just be her deal. Yeah. Um, so they can't. Like I said, I don't think. Yeah, her deal with Bobbity. I feel like they would have to bench Bobbity because of his, his. He can't grab anyone. But that's why I'm going to lean towards androids. So that, that's where my vote is going. Uh, Destiny? I think... Um, I think, honestly, this might be a pretty even match, considering how... Ginyu's still a fine character. Mm. So is Salsa and Doria. I think the only one that will struggle is either Bobbity or Hercule, but that depends on which one's in. Um, while... Honestly, like, there's not really a big burst character that can shut down 17, like how some other teams have it. Hmm. Unless, you know, Hercules just suddenly pops off, or Bobby decides to ult. Yeah. It's gonna be a rough one. Uh. Nappa? Mm. Yeah, I think it's gonna be even, but. I think androids have the edge, just matchup wise. Yeah. I think there are like Hercules really, if it's Hercules against 16, for instance, it's gonna be really bad for them. These really melee heavy characters might give Hercule and uh, Bobbity phase in a really rough time. Yeah, well, I agree. So, what, that's 3 0 to androids? Yeah. Right, okay. Uh, moving on to match number three, we have Budokai versus ED. Now this is rough because the same scenario as last week for ED, where they had the same record as the other team, um, mm -hmm. and we're going to find out which one's going to get back up uh, to and, uh, six, six. And Vegeta's coming back in, and Adult Gohan's coming back in. I am personally Oof. putting my vote to Budokai because no, no. You know, offense against ED, but early Piccolo and Adult Gohan are like locked in, and they are Budokai's best two characters. Uh, ED, um, obviously, I'm not sure who they're going to bench, but uh, they've got mid Goku. If he is in, he needs to buck up his ideas from last week because he was really struggling. And um, like I can I can imagine a scenario where, say, you've got early Piccolo against mid Goku on his demonic bargain build, just not giving him any space to do anything, and the same you know what? thing happening. Um, so you know I'm what I think it's for Budokai. Say that again. So, who I think is gonna be benched? I think mid Vegeta because he has been benched too. Oh. Okay. But for Budokai, they still have two people with no bench. Oh, that's true, yeah. Both of the both of the Gokus. And I think they're going to bench N Goku because he's been the weaker one between the two. Yeah, that makes sense. Hmm. 
So, who you voting for, Destiny? Um, honestly, like, it's pretty hard because they're, like you said, both teams with you know the same record. I think I'll go with Budokai just because they have early pick in, who's their strongest, obviously. Budokai's been doing super good, and if they have early Goku, he's still been doing good even though he comes in the later half. And you just you can't count out Adult Gohan. Oh, it's Adult Gohan. Speaking of that man, a man who's very familiar with him, uh, Nata, what are you saying? <sighs> it's... It's really tough, but I'll just say this: if if Ed has a non out, and you look at the lineup of mid Ku, mid Vegeta, and Vegeta Krillin, and if you change the name of the team from Ed to one of the All Star teams, I would believe you because that would be on some given years that could just be a whole All Star team. Because <laughs> it's they're all great, especially with Krillin now. But all of them can just go off. Not, not that Budokai can't do it, but I'm on the Krillin train. I think Krillin's gonna, he's my man. Well, Krillin, I mean, there's a chance he's out, honestly. That's what, I'm so torn because I have no idea who Ed would pinch here. Um, I mean, voting for adult Gohan is the safe option, but I'm gonna go Ed, Ed. with the assumption that Nam is out. Okay, that's... I mean, it's not a bad assumption. It's not a terrible... No, it isn't. Um, so that's 2-1 to Budokai, but I think we all think it's going to be intense and close. Uh, so, match number four is Cold versus RW. Now, I guess I can share the goss, as it were. Um, Alright, here we go. So... This week, we've got Zarbon benched. So Zarbon is out this week. Um, we have the lineup in this order of Tau, Cooler, Jace, and 100% Freezer. Everyone is pretty much on their normal builds, except uh, Jace has not got Savior. He's gone back to what we used against Kaiju, and he has Quick Fast instead. So 100% Freezer can have Savior. Um, and also we decided instead of alt plus one on cooler we're going to give him den days because he's decided ever since he's on alt plus one he's not going to use his alt so den days he's got guaranteed value with healing so um, yeah uh, that, that's all of my stuff as always the assumption is that I'm going to be voting for my own team and that assumption is correct so uh, Napa what, do you, what are you thinking? Mm. Who did you say you have out this week? Zabon. Zabon, oh. And RW has Aether coming in, that's uh... Uh, no, uh, it's... Aether's on the FA bench. It will be, oh. it will be, um... Yamcha? Coming in? No, Tapion, Tapion, Tapion. Oh, Tapion. I completely missed that, I was looking at the stat sheet. Yeah, Tapion's Wrong. coming in. Papillon combo. Ooh, that should be a. I wonder if they would dare bench 18 against gold. I sure wouldn't. Yeah, I don't think so because 18 was bench week 5. Uh, I think their most likely bench is Yamcha, if I am not mistaken. Because uh, he was benched week 2. Um, I know it says about TN, but I don't know. I always get confused when a character comes off the FA bench. I don't think he needs to be benched three times anyway, so I think TN is fine for benches. If I'm not wrong. Uh, wrong. Whereas Yamcha yeah. needs benches, so that would be my guess. I think TN's also fine for benches because he was the FA for a little bit. That yeah, or yeah. Was the FA for that's what I mean. He's fine for benches. It's, it's Yamcha that's gonna. Uh, actually, Dan hasn't been benched since week one. <laughs> but he was, he only came in on the FA, right? So he only needs the, does he need the three benches still as an FA? I don't know how that... Uh, he's need... Whoever was in for his... Oh, it's 
Oh, I think it, I know why. It's because uh, it was Ta- Tapion was his FA bench replacement. Yeah. And Tapion was benched week one, and then Tapion was benched week seven. But Android, and, but Ader is you know on the FA bench now, so he's still tank things too. Hmm. Okay. Well, but Yamcha hmm. too as well. So it could be. Yeah. And he has not. And he hasn't been benched since week two. Either of those. Yeah, I think. I think I still I'm leaning towards Cold here. Yeah, just if you have Cooler and Frieza in, they've carried you so far. It's it's a, it's gonna be about burst damage against A team. That's what it's gonna boil down to. I feel. It's whether Jace can do more than seven thousand. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to say it like that. Oh, but... <laughs> funny. Um... Should be a good one, but I'll give it to uh, Cold. It will definitely be entertaining. Destiny. Honestly, it's just very hard. Like. You bring back in Tal, but it's like RW's just been such a good team this season. They're, they're definitely one of every time that I've watched a week. That they're, they're the team that I look out for a lot because I don't know. Marjuban eighteen is scary. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I'm going. I'm going to go with RW actually. But I think it'll be close. Yeah, I think it will be. As long as Jason do 7k or Tao does 7k, I'll be happy. <laughs> um, cool, so that's 2 on to Cold. Um, but it'll be a close match, I'm sure. We've got match number 5, which is Namek versus Muscle. Two teams that are struggling right now. Um, at the gate, I'm going to go with Namek because I just think they're struggling less than Muscle are. Um, 13 is coming back in. That is very scary and true, but... And the uh, Nuova's coming back in. Nuova's... Who has not been consistent. I I, I'm just going to say late Piccolo definitely for that, even with 13. Even with him doing not well this week, late Piccolo... They might bench late Piccolo, actually. Oh, really? He hasn't been one. He hasn't been benched in week three. It would be his last bench, but I, I would, I wouldn't put it past Namek to bench him oh, one final time. Get out of the way. So he's it, yeah. So he's in the rest of the season. I don't. I think he'll be in, and I, I'm gonna say late Piccolo death. Uh, no. I mean, it really, it's gonna be late Piccolo and PyCon versus thirteen. We all know it. Pretty much, yeah. Uh, well, thirteen and actually, is... they might ben- they might be benching Trunks, who has who is uh, actually their worst by two hundred damage. Yeah, maybe King Cold needs to so... put his ideas up though too. At the moment, he's not I think good. King Cold just had a rough matchup because it's not like King Cold's been the worst character for them. He hasn't been, but the last two weeks he's not been very good. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I, I'm going with Namek. What, what are your, what are you thinking, Destiny? Are you thinking maybe? The um, it's thirteen. It's the best character in the league, but Pycon and Late Pickle are such a hurdle. But. Considering how PyCon didn't do great versus GT Goku, who honestly can is while he's a good character in theory, hasn't been the best. I think it shows some faults in PyCon. So I'm going to go with Muscle. Because I think Muscle's finally at least starting to get a grasp on at least their main three this season. If they bench Trunks, that's one of their weaker characters gone. And they and honestly like they really just need Broly to at least do like a B two or something. Do something, Broly, please. <laughs> um yeah. Nappa, what are you thinking? I'm gonna give it to Muscle. 
because I'm assuming Pycon and Light Pickle is going to be ultra dynamic this week. Yeah, it could be right. And even uh, even though 13's coming in, if, in terms of the records, both of the teams are they're not doing great right now. And I think you gotta take your chances. If you have two characters that are performing, you gotta sometimes bench them in these these times when the you're fighting a team with a record, even if it doesn't really reflect their actual team. I mean, that's what I'm thinking. It's uh, it's See, just anomaly for Broly to be averaging what he's averaging right now, 25k. I'm thinking the that's opposite gonna last. from Namek's perspective. I'm almost thinking, do they think, because it's muscle and they're also sort of struggling a little bit, do they put their best in to try and make, like, get a victory where, kind of like what Derp have done before, where they, they'll bench a strong character against a team that they think they'll lose against just on the basis that that character's bench is out of the way. Maybe Namek do that line of thinking. Maybe they don't. Maybe they... You know, they have to bench one of their stronger just to get out of the way, but I don't I don't know how they're gonna approach it. But yeah. Um that's two one to muscle. Moving on to match number six, we have Cinema versus Sentai. Now, have we got any juicy details, Destiny? Yeah, yeah, just uh For details, uh, Janemba's benched. Okay. Um, we are starting Gogeta with a boost, actually. He is getting aura change on... He's getting aura change on him. Which, uh, if you guys don't know, basically acts as RFS, but you get to have the aura change with it. Okay. What mm. what color? Uh, wait, do you even get to pick the color? Is it always green? Oh no, you get to pick the color. What color have we gone with? We've gone with a blue. Ooh, spicy blue Gogeta. Love to see it. <laughs> and uh, we are doing another boost. We are doing it for Raditz. Oh. Because he has a slightly different build than normal. Okay. He, he has Super 1, Eternal Life, Fighting Spirit, and Savior with a Kabito Secret Arts boost. <laughs> Man's gonna be living Whoa. forever. And he's gonna be. He best be using that blast stockage. He best be. And then he's going to have. And then we have Turles and Vosh in the back. Our thought process is. We see people starting their strongest character, basically. Let's do. Let, Let's just throw our strongest out there. Try to get some stuff early. Get a bit of a lead going. Yeah. Um. <sighs> I fully expect Jiren to be in, and I know Saewon's going to be in. I'm either predicting that Birder or Raccoon is going to be out. We'll find out tonight. Wait, was Say Say a man out last week? He was, wasn't he? No, Say a woman. No, but was Say a man out last week? Uh, say a woman was out last week. So yeah. she's guaranteed in. Yeah, but, she's guaranteed. But Say a man was in last week. Yeah. Okay. I said I'm. I know Say a woman's coming in, and I'm expecting Jiren to be in. No, no, no. I was just asking, like, not off that. I knew what you said, but I was just, I was just checking whether Say a man was in last week. Um. Uh, actually, they might bench Saya, man, because he thinking. hasn't benched his group one. That's but... not who I think is going to be bent. I, unfortunately, have to vote for Sentai because, and simply because, obviously, no, no, I'm Jiren... for Sentai because it's... it's not just because of Jiren, actually. It's because Berta has been monstrous ever since they put him on this key build. And I'm also very scared of Raccoon. Um, because what your map? What maps? It's oh, it's a destructible map, though, isn't it? Oh, that could change things. Can anyone destroy the map? Like other? Can Jaren? Does Jaren's ult destroy the map? It does, doesn't it? So Jaren's. I'm pretty sure, yes. 
Jaren's Oh, well. and Raccoon, and Raccoon. Ah, Raccoon Rac might be benched then, because he'll destroy the map. Whoa. And I don't know whether they want that. To be honest, I really have not seen people. But, well, I've seen the map be destroyed, but I don't really ever see people aim it in a way where it does. But Raccoon's own map will, their own, uh, ult will destroy the map too, I'm pretty sure. Because that's one of his downsides, his ult destroys the map. From what I remember, um, so he could really screw himself over. In that case, I'm going to vote for you guys. I'm going to vote for Cinema because I think that if Raccoon's in, they'll struggle uh, because of the map destruction. And if he's not in, then Sayaman's in and he's not been the best. So, yeah, I'm going to vote for Cinema. Um, well, I'm voting for Senko. Oh my god, yeah. train his own team. Nappa? Uh... Or in fact, are you are you explaining why you portraying your own team? I didn't think he was going to explain it. Go yeah. on, explain it. T tell um, us why you uh, they, have, they have Jiren. Literally, we have one character that can probably deal with Raccoon and the like, character starting. Um, Birder is really good against melee characters, and uh, and Say Woman if she gets the clashes. Yeah. Nappa? Yeah, I'm thinking because. Uh... I'll give it to Sentai, not because I think it's gotta be one-sided, but because they have how much? They have more Zen? They have nine Zen. Which could be anything from close out special to B2 Bonanza on Jira. I don't even wanna. <laughs> it could be really nasty, that's what <laughs> mm. They have so scary. many options. Yeah. Didn't even think about Zenny. Uh oh, yeah, but well, it's a division also. That's as is tradition. It is. Um, so that's two one to Sentai. Although I think it will be close regardless. Uh, match number seven, the um, Royals versus Boo Saga. Um, I'm gonna go out the gate and go on a limb on this one actually. Although I don't know whether. It, it would be considered going out on a limb, but um, despite the records, despite the fact that Boo Saga are, you know, almost nigh on undefeatable, they have one loss. I'm going to vote for Royals. Um, they've got what baby Vegeta coming back in the the FA baby it, Vegeta. It's it's, ba it's base baby Vegeta and Kid Boo coming back in. Uh, so they've got base baby coming back in, who's an all-star contender, by the way, point that one out. Um, and I, as I've said many a time, whenever you drop a character off Royals, there almost like never seems to be that big of a drop off, except for maybe Margin Vegeta. But even then, it's not so much of a drop off to where it's ridiculous. Whereas everyone else, usually there is. And I know Boo Saga have been good this season, but I don't know, man. I just I just look at what Royals did to Androids last week, systematically dismantling them without Margin Vegeta even touching the field, and I just I don't I don't think Boo Saga is gonna come out on top this match. Um, nah, what, what what do you think? It's it could go either way. It's both teams are really good. I think I'll go Boo Saga just because Kid Boo, Kid Boo's that guy. He had an elite already. He did. They They've had also, two elites. Yeah, Kid Boo had one, and then oh yeah, Majin Boo. Also. What I will yeah. say yeah. is, <laughs> what I will say is though, is Kid Boo hasn't particularly done that great in the interval because he's got an elite, but he's not an All Star contender. So. See that as you will. Well, he's also just been really going even with, like, almost every starter in existence. Yeah, that, that's... I'm not saying that he's been terrible. I'm just saying he's not been... You know, he's got an elite and he's not on the All-Stars. He's not been, like, ridiculous so far this season. Destiny? <laughs> or are you still... Are you uh, still deliberating? Yeah, I was just... Yeah, I was just thinking a lot of stuff. 
I don't know who who's gonna get benched from either side. Cause it's uh See, it's... their bench benches are looking pretty even. Let's see, uh, it's uh Royals uh, Usaga Royals Probably Majin Vegeta. He has not been benched since week two. This, yeah, and they thinking... also just finished up a division, so I, I was thinking King Vegeta because Giants are not really good against Bulls. King Vegeta was uh, benched week 6, so I don't know if they're going to bench him so soon, though. Yeah, it could be. I don't know. Yeah, but, I mean, yeah, hey, but I'll it's just... at least only, it's only one giant. At least. And uh, for Boost Saga, um, it probably going to be Majin Buu. He has not been benched since week 2. So... Yeah, well, I think I'll keep it on Bull Saga. I think Kid Bull's Kid Bull should have it. Okay. Hmm. So, yeah, I'm I'm going to have to go with Bull Saga as well because uh, while both teams have very consistent characters and just can hit very good highs, but can also very can hit very bad lows. And I think Boo Saga can... Boo Saga specifically with like Evil Boo, Kid Boo doing his thing, and... Vegeta, while he hasn't been super the, in the best, he... Still a burst option. And Buhan has definitely been looking up lately, so... Okay. But I think this will be extremely close, if anything. Yeah. I, I agree. That's not this. Okay, so that's 2-1 to Boo Saga, um, and now we get on to the final match of the week, which is GT versus Hybrids. Um, so, with this match we've got, um, so Gordo will be coming back in for Hybrids, and Baby Vegeta is coming back in for GT, so... Instantly, I'm going to go with GT because, and that's not salt from me or because we lost hybrids or anything. Uh, I just think the differential there of, you know, you've got Goldo coming in and you've got bloody baby Vegeta all-star coming in. I, I think there's a bit of a difference there. Let's see, uh, GT is probably going to bench Super Saiyan 4. And uh, I'm pretty sure Hybrid's is benching future because he has not been benched. Okay, yeah, I'm still saying, I'm still definitely saying uh, GT, especially since Jero will have, and I can't believe I'm saying this, but he will probably have favorable matchups in the sense that um, he can, if teams. Well, he can try. He basically, he can absorb um, Kamehameha's, which obviously Ultimate Go On has a Kamehameha. Uh, Team Go On when he transforms has one, uh, or when he just you know does his all, um, and he can do you know he, he can do stuff with that, and also he can actually grab people in this in this matchup. Um, but also, just again. Goldo being in and having having baby come back in that's just such a big big thing for me that yeah I think I'm gonna gonna stick with GT. What about you, uh, Napa? Yeah, I pretty much agree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just baby Vegeta's been on a tear, and I don't really Jiro. It's a good matchup for Jiro given how much uh, how many key super based characters Hybrid has. If there's any team you want Jiro against, it's probably hybrids in the sense of max power B ones galore of hybrids. Oh yeah, and he can grab people out of max power. That's gonna be really annoying if he decides to do that. The hybrid, so yeah. So destiny, are we thinking? I'm gonna say to GT as well. I'm glad to know it's not just me being uh, or me being perceived as salty. You know what I'm saying? I'm glad that you all agree. 
my hypothesis is, you know, sound. Um, okay, so that's 3-0 to GT. And with that, we've come to the end of the capsule cast. So I just want to say a thank you guys for watching. Um, if you want to check out the links below to the Discord, website, Twitter, and the TikTok, they're all down there. So take a, take a look. And while you're taking a look down there, you want to comment for uh, any improvements or you know e even if uh, you know there's any mistakes we've made on the cast this week like stats or anything just just let us know um, and yeah it's, it's been a good one um, I have been your host Xmat joined with my wonderful co-host Destiny see you and a great special guest Cope well, hopes, yeah. coach of Kaiju, Napa. Yeah, I enjoy the rest of your day. Yeah, and we'll see you all soon. Bye, guys.